uh, Jonathan, jo Jonathan, Jonathan Gluck from the Heritage Provider Network. So, so uh, uh, Jonathan, let's start with you. What is the Heritage Provider Network and what did you guys announce today? Can you get real close to the mic so we can hear you here? Sure. So we block out all this crazy background noise. And so welcome to theCUBE, first of all. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. The Heritage Provider Network is a physicians group that's based in Southern California. We provide healthcare for approximately 700,000 members, making us one of the largest groups in California, the largest by geographic scope. And I'm sorry. And um, that's really what, what our nuts and bolts business is, is providing health care for our membership. So you announced, we announced a prize today, right? A yes. competition, right? Yes, what, we did. what is that all about? We have decided to launch a $3 million prize for a team that creates an algorithm that predicts the hospitalization of the members of a given patient population. The theory is that if we can create an algorithm that predicts the hospitalization. We can then speak, talk to the doctors for that, that patient who can attempt to provide care to keep the patient from needing to be hospitalized. Um, unnecessary hospitalizations are both a drain on resources as well as simply not good for an individual. Hospitals are Hospitals have their place when care is necessary, but are also dangerous places to be if you don't need to be there. So we're talking about an application here of data science that actually has social implications and implications in terms of making lives better. Now we've talked about in the past about, well, maybe it's predicting traffic patterns and things like that that are relatively trivial compared to saving lives. So, so Jeremy, talk a little bit about Kaggle and what it is you guys do and where you fit in this whole competition. Well, hey, don't knock uh, tra traffic patterns. Nobody wants to be late to work. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sure, I mean, there, there are even more important ways we can use data. So one of the interesting things about, uh, ab about this question of how do you actually leverage data is it often takes some pretty serious number crunching algorithms, right? And it's really hard to work out who's the guy that's got that number crunching algorithm I can use. I, I could pay enormous amounts of money to big name guys, they could come up with an algorithm, and then I don't even know if it's any good. So what we do at Kaggle is we run data mining competitions. So people put their data up there on the web and then our competitors just click a button, download it, do whatever the hell they like with it to come up with an answer. And then it's data mining as a sport. They put that answer back up on the web just by clicking another button and they appear with a score on the leaderboard. So there's teams, there's scores, there's competitors. And so this approach of running competitions we're finding, and Netflix found as, as well, is a really great way to get the most out of data. So that's why Kaggle is running this HPN prize. Now, we were talking off camera, uh, this isn't so-called big data, is it? It's, pre it's pretty small data. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe it's medium-sized okay. data, Dave, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to me, big data gets big when you need multiple machines to look after it. This data set easily fits into memory, very easily fits into memory. And I've competed in a lot of these competitions. I can tell you that the algorithms I see or that I use that do well are generally ones that I run on my laptop, normally using free open source software. So if I think back to 20 years ago when I started in the world of data science, we needed big multi-machine setups to run what today we'd think of as simple 100,000 row problems. But today we can run these problems on our laptops. And HPN's data set is a few million records once it's all put together, easily small enough to fit in pretty much any software you can think of. So Jonathan, we, we talk a lot these days about healthcare costs, obviously new healthcare bill passed, and, and there's a lot of finger pointing going on. You know, the, the insurance companies point at the doctors, the doctors say, hey, you've got to have you know, accountability and patients need to get more involved in decision making. Is, is, is HPN through, through, through data and data science actually attacking that problem? Is that part of what we're seeing here? Yes, it is. Um, what, what we believe firmly at HPN is we need to move from what we think of today as a sick care system, meaning we provide most of the health care to individuals after they've become ill. We attack the problem after the horse is out of the barn. We need to move to a system that focuses on keeping pe people healthy. It's really, when you think about it, the only way as a society that we can provide all of the health care needs that people have. We just simply do not have the resources as a society to attack the problem after people have become sick. 
And so we think of this prize as being a large step towards that, trying to predict who is going to become sick so we can then focus on keeping them healthy before they need before they become sick and need to use those scarce resources. So how's the prize work? Is it winner take all? We've got some alpha geeks out there that are sort of, I think, chomping at the bit here to get involved. The, pr the prize is gonna have two components. There will be one component which is the person who creates the algorithm that predicts the given percentage of hospitalizations. And that final figure is yet to be set, but will the rules will obviously be out before the April 4th launch date will win the $3 million prize. In addition, we intend to have milestone prizes along the way, meaning the leading team after presumably six months, one year, year and a half, however long it takes for someone to win the prize, will win also a significant sum of money. So the, the, the duration is, is open-ended? The duration is open-ended. It will Someone will need to come up with a algorithm that meets the minimum requirement, and when you come up with that algorithm, you win the prize. So it's for the first one over the finish first line wins. First one over wins. the finish line wins. Right. Dave, can I give some suggestions to yeah. the alpha geeks? Yeah, please, about absolutely. This? I mean, I, I love competing in these competitions, <coughs> and I know a lot of people who say to me, Jeremy, I've so much been thinking about competing in one of your competitions, and I say, why don't you? And, and it's kind of like, oh, I don't know, I haven't got time, or I'm worried I might not do very well, or there's all kinds oh. of excuses, right? My advice to people is to start getting involved in competing right now, okay? This huge $3 million prize is going to be around for a while. It's not easy. If you can imagine working out who's going to end up in hospital and who's not, it's going to require lots of great model building looking at things like everything from drug effectiveness to number of interactions to people's characteristics and so forth. So I really think people need to start actually getting involved in competitions. So they can go to the uh, heritagehealthprize.com website, register now, then they can, on April the 4th, they can download the data set, it's pretty straightforward. But in the meantime, go along to kaggle.com and have a look at one of the other competitions and start learning how to compete. Meet some people out there, build some teams, find out about how this all works. I think it would be a really great experience. Maybe try it out on some other competitions yeah. and sharpen your, uh, yeah. sh sharpen your skill sets. And, and look, you know, if you give it a go and you come last the first time you put a submission in, that's okay. Think about it overnight. Come back the next day, try something a bit better. You'll keep moving up the leaderboard. You'll have a lot of fun doing it. Now that data set is is a fixed data set, right? At at what time zero, whatever. Right, right now, I guess, right? Or is it it's April fourth? You said April fourth will be the launch date. Okay, so your launch date phase. and the, the 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 data set will be fixed at that point in time. Yes. Is that right? Yes, it will. Be. No, it won't be any changes made no. to the data set. No. Okay, so. So, Jeremy, that's good advice for people out there. So, so where do they find these resources? So, Kaggle.com is, is the best to place to start. check out some other competitions. Yep. And they all have basically the same kind of framework, right? So, there's always a, a file that you download, which has got information about outcomes in it. In the health prize example, it'll be hospitalization outcomes. There'll be another file that contains all of the same information, but without the outcomes included. And that's the thing where you've got to send back a column of numbers saying, this is what I reckon the outcomes will be. Then on our side, on the Kaggle website, we split the result into two pieces. There's one which is used to build the public leaderboard, where you see how you're going. And then there's another piece that we actually keep separate, even again, hidden from everybody until the last day of the competition to actually double check that the leaderboard result can actually be applied to a whole new fresh piece of data as well. So there's this standard framework that we use. It works really well and you can try using it now. All right, so definitely go check that out for those of you who are inclined to attempt to go win $3 million. That's a serious chunk of change. And, uh, and uh, so that URL is K-A-G-G-L-E dot com, Mark, in case you want to bring it up. And, uh, and show people. As you, you can see, guys, we've got a lot of people watching here online, so this is obviously an interesting segment. So while I have you two, I wonder if we can talk about you know, the conference here. We're at Strata, the big data conference, right? We were talking, well, let me ask it's you. It's a data conference, it, it's big. It's a data <laughs> conference, it's big. There's a lot of people here, right? It's in the heart of Silicon Valley. Is big, is big data, Jeremy, is big data overhyped in your opinion? Some people, Dave, have big data problems. Uh, Google has big data problems. Bitly has big data problems. You need to come closer to the mic. Most people, I think, have medium-sized data problems. They have the kind of data problems that if you use a, a good algorithm on your laptop, you'll get great results. So if you've got less than 
a few gigabytes of data, then you probably don't need to be sending it out to clusters. You can probably use a fairly simple streaming algorithm uh, using open source and free tools. And the great thing about doing it that way is that rather than spending hours waiting for the algorithm to finish, you can use much more powerful algorithms, try many more algorithms, spend a lot more time crunching the data and getting better answers. So Dave, I compete in a lot of these competitions, right? And I've had some good results. And the times I've had good results is when I turn the big data problem into a little data problem. And I find a way to run lots of algorithms really quickly and try lots of things. So, so you're saying in that instance, it's about speed and, and getting the most efficient application of those it's algorithms as possible. It's about speed of development. This is all yeah. about prototyping, okay? Yeah. Now, at, when this is all said and done, for example, in the Netflix prize, the guys that won that had 300 submodels. Now, you can't build 300 submodels on a billion rows of data, right? <laughs> so what they did is they built these things on smaller amounts, and then at the end, at the very last phase, then it's a big data problem. That's where Netflix goes and say, oh, how do we do this in real time for a billion customers every day? That's the big data problem, but the prototyping, the algorithm development is not about big data tools, in my opinion. Right. Now, now of course, a lot of people, again, we were talking offline, uh, ind indicated that there, you, you said a lot of people using Hadoop, they don't necessarily have to use Hadoop. Why do you think they do that? Just because it's such a hot area? They want to oh be part of the next big thing? I'm going to say controversial things now. Don't oh, come on. Let's, you might as well. But, uh, <laughs> Why do they use Hadoop? Because you think, it's, you, think, you think that's overkill? I mean, Some it's important. These, the reason I'm asking is yeah. that we have a lot of practitioners in the audience trying to figure out, should I be applying Hadoop to no. my business and where should no, I be applying probably it? probably not. <clears throat> so help, help the audience understand where Why they should Hadoop? be applying Why it and where Hadoop they shouldn't. Big? Hadoop <clears throat> is big because Java is a terrible platform to be working on these kind of solutions. Because it's so damn hard to do in Java, you've got to have incredibly clever tools to do it more easily or even to do it at all. Hadoop works on an incredibly difficult engineering problem, which is making Java work on these kinds of problems. Okay. The people that work on the hardest engineering problems and get some traction on it are the coolest people in any industry. That's why Hadoop is cool. So for some people, it's fantastic. For a lot of people, it's the wrong tool for the wrong job. So it's the pain reliever for Java. Now, Jonathan, now having said all that, in, in in, in the medical and, and particularly in research uh, communities, you know, big data has a lot of applications, doesn't it? I mean, what, do you, what are you seeing there? Can you talk about that a little bit? I, I would probably defer on a question like that, simply because that's not my area of expertise. There clearly is um, a ton of data in the medical field. We, there may be more data in the medical field than anywhere else. Um, I, the question really is how well do we use that data today to allow us to do what medical care really should do, which is take care of patients. Um, and I don't think we do a particularly good job of that, and that is something we're trying to begin to solve with a prize like this. Right, right. So um, so how long are you guys here for? Are you going to be here tomorrow? 